Okay. So, could we can pretend that we're saying hello, but I guess it's not. Yep. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Okay. Um, first one and most important, maybe, how long have you been making music? Um, well, I, I don't know, it's hard to put a date on it, I guess. What I'm doing right now, I've been doing for maybe, specifically with the kalimba, I've been doing it for about uh, three years. But before that, I was writing songs for like a couple of years before that. And then before that, I was... Um, I actually studied music at university, so I've been making music for a long while. Mm -hmm. But this incarnation is about three years old. Three yeah. years old, okay. Yeah. And um, okay, next thing, instruments. Uh, what different kind of instruments do you play, actually? Well, uh, my main instrument is the kalimba, which I have here, um, which is a it's like a westernized version of an African instrument called mm -hmm. an mbira. That's a beautiful. Sound G major ish, um, and I use a loop pedal to loop it, and sometimes I use a Casio keyboard, um, and I've got some pedals which I have some like bass sounds and stuff, and then I sing and loop my voice and yeah. And you um, can you actually play the guitar or something like that? I can play the guitar. I can play it a little bit. Yeah, I've got actually a few guitar songs, but I can never be bothered bringing a guitar <laughs> with okay. me to do it. I also um, I studied piano, so I can play piano quite well, but I don't well, play it so much anymore. I guess it's quite, uh, it comes quite in handy when writing songs. Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good tool, piano. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And some say when you can play piano, you're actually able to play quite a lot of different instruments. I think it's a great instrument to have as your bass. You know, like I feel like because I spent so much time learning that instrument, I learned a lot about music in general and theory mm. because the piano is so visual. You, you learn yeah. a lot of theory and then it's so easy to apply that to a lot of different instruments. Yeah, cool. But I mean, I've been trying to learn guitar for years. Guitar's really hard. Different way of playing, you know, yeah. you have to be playing in the calluses, and, but it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, sometimes you end up like doing something like that. Yeah, it's weird it's... on the hands. The way yeah. You <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, uh, what's your main influence? Uh, well, let's put a limitation to that, maybe uh -huh. regarding the kalimba music. Um, well actually, I haven't listened to a lot of kalimba players. That's something that I really enjoyed when I first played it, was that I didn't have any pre-existing sounds in my head, unlike piano where this hunt you know, a century's worth of piano music. So, um, in terms of the kalimba, I, I guess I'm just inspired by people who use interesting sounds in pop music. So a big, I guess a big influence would be Tune Yards. Um, she's a, a great looping artist from the States, but she plays like a ukulele through a guitar amp and okay. drums and weird sounds with her voice. So she's an influence, I guess, and um, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I'll get different kinds yeah. of influence. Um, when I listen to uh, the live EP, uh, mm -hmm. I really uh, get the feeling that it's very some spherical kind of music. It really, really. What word did you say then? Some spherical, uh, like in like going to another sphere, oh, like cool. experiencing yeah, something yeah. else. That's cool. Um, the, the one question that came to my mind yeah. is, um, where do you draw your inspiration? Where does it come from? Yeah. Well, um, I do love being able to create all the music myself and layer it up. And it is sort of like, then it envelops my voice, sort of, I guess. Um, and I think some of those, some of those sounds, um, was, are influenced a little bit by like, when I was playing piano, I played a lot of jazz and mm. contemporary classical work. So I was, I started around the time, like the last year that I was really playing piano quite seriously, I started getting into um, George Crumb and um, Ligeti and all people who do really interesting, crazy things with the piano, like playing inside the piano yeah. and putting nails in. And, and those sounds I found really like mystical and, um, and just quite beautiful because it was sort of otherworldly and I think that that's even though I don't I wouldn't my music isn't 
jazz at all. It's really like pop folk. But I think those sort of wanting to draw on those sort of like otherworldly sounds comes a little bit from that. Yeah, I can say it yeah. comes definitely. Uh, yeah. There's, yeah, well, I guess I said something like uh, in the review that you can really dream to it. Yeah, and that's, cool. that's it, really. Yeah. I just love it to you all. That's just nice. plug in the headphones and then lay down on the, on yeah. the carpet. And cool, that's great. So, yeah, I'm a fan too. Yeah, <laughs> just thanks. <kind> of it. <laughs> okay, um, the next thing is songwriting. Um, just well, how can we actually imagine, or how can I imagine you are writing a song? Just starting off with the piano, starting off with mm. something else? Well, it normally, the lyrics always come first for me. Mm -hmm. That's really big, it's really important that I know what the song's about. Okay. Um, so generally lyrics come to me when I'm doing something totally unmusical. So I'm walking to the train station <laughs> or I'm doing the dishes or you know and I'm just letting my mind sort of wander as it does and then generally something comes that I think I've been thinking about that I've been wanting to write a song about and the words sort of come to me not not as a whole song but just like the idea and then I'll try and write these ideas down and once I've got sort of like it doesn't have to be all there but once I've got a vague idea what the emotion is of the song or what I'm trying to say, that's when I'll move to an instrument, which could be whatever's nearest. Most recently, I, I've been going straight to the kalimba and the loop pedal, but occasionally I'll pick up a guitar or, yeah, and then see what happens from that. Generally, the chords, the music comes from the mm -hmm. feeling of the words, the, the rhythm of the sentences and stuff. That's quite unusual. Um... Uh, concerning other yeah. artists, they're always the music yeah. is the first thing and then the lyrics are quite a kind of figure. True. I think that what when I was playing jazz music, I ended up finding it a bit too intellectual that you'd put chords together because you... Well, I would, not everyone. <laughs> but I would think, oh, that should sound good because I know the theory behind it. And so when I started really getting into songwriting, I loved how the lyrics were so important. The actual meaning of the song gave structure to everything else so i think that's been really big when i've moved into like songwriting it's been what's this song about what's the theme of it what's and then i'll try and let that dictate what comes because there are so many chords out there you can you could make it you know i i i really need that sort of like focus like the what's what's this about what does it mean to people mm. yeah yeah that's <laughs> quite, a, quite a good way to write yeah. the songs I guess so. That's why most of the songs are quite. Um, I don't know how to, how to put it. Up. They're they're quite as as they are. You you, yeah. you, you read the yeah. the title and then yeah. it occurs to you, and then it's almost just some yeah. kind of whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I think though also I am interested in um, trying to explore different way, ways to write songs. I think it's good not to have one just one way because you want to try and write differently. I know that. I mean, some of the best. Beatles songs, the Beatles are a big influence on my songwriting. I know Paul McCartney wrote Yesterday, he wrote the music first and he had like gibberish lyrics. Well, he said something about scrambled eggs, that yeah. was like the, scrambled yeah. And I think that's amazing because he's come up with this song that's so meaningful and you think the music and the lyrics are totally tied together. But it was the opposite way for him than yeah. the way I write it. So he's totally hilarious at first and then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's cool. I'd like, you know, I, I think there's definitely, you definitely should be experimenting with how to write songs if you're a songwriter. Yeah. Yeah, I agree to that. Yeah. Um, okay, regarding your um, your mm. recordings, especially the EP mm -hmm. The Garden of Youth, um, there's something to me that I could, um, is it quite difficult to perform these songs live when you record them in that way? And then yeah, well, when I recorded Garden of Youth, which was now, it was actually recorded in, um, in 2010. So it was recorded nearly like three years ago mm. now, which feels like a long time. Um, so when I, was, when I was playing that, I was actually playing mainly with the band. So it was easy to perform them because yeah. I had a really great band. I had my sister playing like toy percussion and, and 
my boyfriend playing guitar. It was a, it was a really fun band, but um, I st started getting into the kalimba around the time that I was mixing that record. So that's why there's no kalimba on it was because it, it was like my transition period. So I played those. I ended up playing those songs solo when I moved to Europe, and then and it was actually really fun, sort of stripping them back. Mm -hmm. um, um, and just finding new ways to sing them. Um, but now the live show is sort of at the heart, the beginning of what I do. So I'm recording a new record now, just started. And um, it's been really fun rather than trying to record lots and lots of instruments and then work out how to play them live. It's the opposite. It's like I've got a whole bunch of new songs now that I've playing live. And now it's just working out, well, how do I want it to sound on the recording? But it, uh, is this going to be real, uh, some, some sort of stripped down version on the record or do you want to really put some more into it? Um, I want it to really encapsulate the energy that you see at my live show. So mm. it's the heart of the recording is the kalimba and like my voice, but um, where, so I'm working with a producer and we're um, putting uh, some a little bit of like electronic beats in it and and um, you know little bits of extra color that work that works in a studio environment um, it's really fun it's like a different medium but the energy should be the same you know and the songs are the same yeah. So, yeah and so you won't have a problem performing them still on live no 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 yeah the idea is that they're just like they're a different expression of the same song mm -hmm. yeah okay um, well, I guess the next question is now that the greatest importance because, yeah, you're touring primary solo, yeah, mm -hmm. you're touring primary yeah. solo. So good, we talked about that. <laughs> okay. Um, I might, I, I'm interested in exploring maybe um, working with one or two other musicians in the future. Um, but it's... You know, there's a few things I'd like to explore, but at the moment I'm really happy that I know that I can just play and play my songs exactly as I want them. I don't need anyone else. So that's been really important for my independence mm. as an artist. But I'm, you know, who knows, like in six months or 12 months time, maybe maybe there'll be someone playing drums or, or a bass player or something like that. That would be fun, but we'll see. Yeah, it could be an improvement to the sound. Yeah. Or actually, what's actually make it sound quite sound differently? It would. I I can see. I would if I if I played with other people who knew my music really well. It could give a real freedom because I wouldn't then have to loop everything. I could loop the important kalimba parts and and then focus on my singing. And then like a bass player and a drummer or someone doing electronic beats or something could then sort of take care of the structure of the song. Yeah. Um, which could be really fun, but. There's a lot of work in getting like a new live show up like that. So that I'm just that's like a long term thing that I'm thinking about. Yeah, it's, it would be quite difficult, I, I imagine. <laughs> well, it would just take a lot of rehearsals and <laughs> coordinating with people. I don't have to coordinate with anyone just at the moment. Oh, okay, I just wanted to see the red yeah, light on it. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, good friend to come. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, okay, just like, it's just like you read my sheet, plans for touring is the next thing, but oh, well, we have to do that. <laughs> well, okay, new album in the making, you are yeah. saying that you are doing a new album. Yes, yes, I'm so excited by it. The initial demos are just sounding really, really good. Um, it's, so we're hoping to get a new single out in the next, probably in, in two months time have a new single and then a, a small EP will come after that and then we'll be turning that into an album over the next year but I really want to get something out so people mm -hmm. can hear my new stuff and um, yeah I'm working with a, a producer called Mes Medallion who's really good in Berlin so um, yeah actually you read your uh, new set of work yeah yes. new set yeah, yeah. So that's that's been really fun. I'm very excited. About it. So one important question, a personal question, actually, mm -hmm. towards the outcome, mm -hmm. the future outcome, yeah. um, will it be available on a physical CD or something like that, um, or vinyl? It will 
Definitely be on CD. I would love to do vinyl. I think that would depend on um, whether I have a label or um, something. Um, I'm not sure if I could fund a vinyl release myself because they're pretty expensive. Yeah. But um, but I love. I mean, I love the idea of it. So we'll see. Vinyl would really look cool. Yeah, it would. It would be very cool. It would be very cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, that sounds better on you, Captain. It's true, you can get a lovely, really big version of the artwork and yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll see. <laughs> yeah, but by definitely one. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, okay, last thing uh, that is of oh, quite importance. Mm -hmm. Musical goals. Do you have any musical goals like uh, example, are there any people you want to work with or any locations you want to play at? Well, I think my musical goal is just to have released an album in the next year or year and a half and to have reached a lot of people. I really, you know, it's, I mean, it's a common goal, I guess, for a musician, but you really want an audience to hear what you're doing. Yeah. So um, I guess that's my sort of main goal. Um, and I'd love to be, um, you know, touring it anywhere, everywhere, <laughs> Europe. Um, I'd really love to release it properly in Australia as well. It's sort of, at the moment, as a, like a DIY indie artist, it's hard to try and push a career in both Europe and Australia. Um, but, you know, Australia is my home and I'd love to feel like that there's an audience there for my music as well. So I guess that's sort of the goals over the next few years. So that's quite yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, I've got my work cut out for me. Yeah. So, okay, I'm cool. actually looking forward to the next album, EP, Great. single. Yep, anything. Yep. Yeah, anything. <laughs> thank you. Uh, on vinyl. Great, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. It was thank a pleasure. You. Yep, thank you. <laughs> cool.